This video is brought to you in collaboration with wowhead.com. Hello everyone! Last week we began our deep dive into the different Dragonflights, talking about Deathwing and his Black Dragonflights. Why not move on to the one that was once upon a time considered to be his best friend? We're gonna be talking about Malagos and his Blue Dragonflights. I am the essence of magic! Malagos was empowered by Keeper Tear and the Titans, after the, at the time, Proto Dragons banded together to end the threat of Galagrond. His blessing came from Norganon, keeper of celestial magics and lore. I believe that you will find that my gift to you is not just a profound duty, which it is, but also a delight, which it is. Magic must be regulated, managed and controlled, but it must also be appreciated and valued and not hoarded. Such is the contradiction you must deal with. May you be dutiful and joyous both. The intelligence and good humored Malagos loved performing his duty, loved sharing the magic and wonders with the world. His domain was just as wondrous as he could ever wish it, filled with brightness and colors and young. Jokingly, they wondered if the Titans shouldn't have made him the aspect of life. And his bond with Nelfarian, it was so tight that they may not have been brothers in blood, they were truly brothers in nature. Perhaps it was that bond that blinded him to the madness that took hold of her Deathwing. When he suggested that they should pull the power together into the Dragon Soul, Malagos insisted to be the first to sacrifice a bit of himself. It was his way of championing his friend's cause. It is done. All have given that which must be given. I now seal the Dragon Soul forever. That terrible glow. Should that be? For it to be as it must, yes. It is a weapon like no other. It must be like no other. And when the madness came to the surface, when Deathwing used the Dragon Soul not just against the Burning Legion, but also the defenders of Azeroth and his fellow dragons, Malagos felt all the more responsible. Him and his blue flight surrounded his old friends, tried to reason with him, but when that failed, they attacked, planning to erase the disc from existence. But he was weakened. A portion of his power was locked within the soul, while Nelfarian was operating at full strength. Even before the White Ark vanished, he held forth the Demon Soul. Instead of the golden light that had decimated so much of the land below, a grey one shot forth in every direction. Malagos created a shield of smoke, but plain smoke it might as well have been. The grey light caught him, threw him back hard. He sailed over the hills, over the horizon, roaring in agony all the way. His prime consort Sindragosa was also hurled away, all the way to the frozen north, where blinded and near death, she instinctively tried to reach Dragoblight, the ancestral dragon graveyards. Her life continued to fade away as her sanity deteriorated. In the midst of her delirium, Sindragosa's final thoughts turned to bitterness and hatred. Hatred against the Burning Legion, against Nelfarian, even against her beloved Malagos, but most of all, Hatred against the world of mortals. Suffer, mortals, as your pathetic magic betrays you! And in her dying moments, Sindragosa vowed revenge. A few millennia later, and she was brought back in on death by the Lich King as Queen of the Frostbrood. Heroes would defeat her, take what remained of her spirits, and bring her back to Caligos at Wormrest Temple, finally letting her spirit rest. For the rest of Malagos' consort and followers, the fate that Nelfarin had in mind was much more horrific. As one, the dragon shriveled. They deflated like draining water sacks. Their cries were terrible to behold. Though they struggled, none could escape the grasping grey illumination. The other dragons sought to come to the rescue, but it was already too late. Reduced to dry husks, their magic and their life force drained by the demon soul, the dying blue dragons faded at last to dust that scattered in the wind. This critical moment would change Malagos and his flight forever. Gone was the merry, humorous giant. With his flight virtually decimated, the Spellweaver would begin to slip into his own madness, as his kind became all but extinct. Deathwing would be defeated, and the Burning Legion invasion, it failed at a great price. The world, it kept on turning, but now, without its aspect of magic, he hid away within his lair of the Nexus, and we can only guess what life on Azeroth would have been like if Malagos would have taken a more active role. 
Would he have taken action against Illidan, creating a new well of eternity? Would he have managed to prevent the Guardian from becoming corrupted? Would the magics that opened the Dark Portal, would that have pushed him and his flight into action? Was he not driven mad with grief? We may, we may never know. But what we do know is that thousands of years later, Deathwing's plans, they led to the enslavement of Alex Shraza to the orcs, and her consort Coriolstras desperately wanted to save his beloved. He asked the other aspects to help him with this, but decided to stand up against Deathwing and his creation. That took quite a lot out of them. They were still weakened after all, their powers locked away within the disc. Even so, they made the call to stand with Coriolstras and others. Others, like the mage Ronin, who managed to destroy the demon soul, restore the Aspects powers, and now, our Deathwing, he had to face his fellow Aspects as equals, a fight that he wasn't going to win, so again, he had to retreat. While having his full powers back was great and all, that didn't immediately mean that his sanity was restored. That damage that was caused by Deathwing, it would also accidentally be fixed by Deathwing. An earlier plan of his, it saw him work together with the orcs to bring some of his dragon eggs to the, at the time, Draenor, which would later be transformed into Outlands. During that magical transformation, the powers of the Twisting Nether, it blasted across the surface, transforming those dragon eggs from black ones into the Netherwing dragons. Powerful beings, yet extremely childish. They had no true leader, which made them susceptible to outside influences, which were ready to abuse them. Not everyone looked upon them with evil intent, though. We also saw the blue dragon Tiragosa, who was betrothed to Caligos. But as the events with Envina played out within the comics, that betrothal and that love, it, it took a backseat. Instead, she grew closer with the human Yorup Mace, and once all was said and done with the events of the Sunwell, she would find herself drawn to Outlands to investigate the magics that she was sensing. Coming into contact with these Nettowing dragons, and she cared deeply for them. She was concerned that more pain and suffering would be inflicted upon them, that they would not survive here in Outlands, so she decided to transport a whole bunch of the Nether Dragons to their Nexus, hoping that its energies would reinvigorate them. Now what Tiragosa never considered was whether the Blue Dragons would be safe from the new guests. The Nether Dragons bathed in the arcane energies of the Nexus. The magic was unlike anything they had ever experienced. They wanted all of it, seeing it as a way to make themselves stronger so that no one could control them. The battle that unfolded, it drew the attention of the Lord Malagos. Normally, he ignored what was happening in the outside world, relying on his servants to investigate anomalies, keep watch over Azeroth. Yet he would not ignore an attack on his very own lair. The Nether Dragons were absorbed into his being. And unexpectedly, the energies of the incorporeal creatures, they swept away the haze of suffering and regrets that had clouded his mind. The nether attack convinced Malagos that he needed to embrace his sacred duty of safeguarding arcane magic on Azeroth once again. And what had happened to the nether wings, it weighed heavily on Tiragosa's heart. She would return to Outland to look after a new generation of them. You could find her and Yorat even now within the nether storm. And besides that, we only saw Tiri show up another time at the Wormrest Temple. This was at the time during the fight against Deathwing with the Cataclysm. Thank you, sisters. I am renewed. That fight is still very much in the future, though. Going back to Malagos, the Blues, they had their sane aspect back, which was a great thing for them. But as it turned out, not so much for the world as a whole. He assessed the state of magical affairs, and he was not happy with how the foolish actions of mortal magi had led to war and chaos. Despite being warned that he should never hoard the magic, that's exactly what he did. Drawing in all the magical ley lines across the world of Azeroth. And ley lines, they're best described as blood vessels across the planets that contain vast sources of magic and power. He drew all of those magical energies into the Nexus, out of the hands of those foolish creatures that could not be trusted with the power. Yet this duty that was given to him, it was not just for the sake of magic or the population on the planet. Deep inside of Azeroth, there slumbers a world soul that might one day awaken. Malagos' actions, it upset the equilibrium of the world. It sparked natural disasters, all the way from North Rend to the southern tips of Kalimdor and the eastern kingdoms. Unless something was going to be done, these disasters, they would spiral out of control, cause irreparable harm to Azeroth's world soul. Champion! Azeroth cries out for your aid! So... When the world ventured into Northrend to take care of the Fred the Lich King, their attention was also drawn to the Nexus. Ronin and the Kirantor, they rebuilt their magical floating citadel of Dalaran, taking it to Northrend to fight in these so-called Nexus Wars. Even the other dragons, after trying to reason with Malagos, they understood that something had to be done. 
Alex Raza and ambassadors from the other flights, even some of the blues, they gathered to discuss what they were going to do. With heavy hearts, they reached an agreement. They would become known as the Wormrest Accords. For the good of Azeroth, they would join the side of mortals, make war on Melagos himself. Reaching this decision was not easy on any of them, but especially for Alex Traza. After all, she saw Melagos as a brother. And as a guardian of life, she abhorred the bloodshed that was to come. Yet if they did nothing, she knew the numbers of lives lost would be unimaginable. After taking out his consort Saragossa, after venturing through the Nexus, the Oculus, grabbing a key from the undead Sephiroth within Noctramus, the heroes finally get entry into the Eye of Eternity, where they, with the aid of the Red Dragons, confronted and killed Malagos. Unthinkable! The mortals will destroy everything! My sister, what have you- I did what I had to, brother. You gave me no alternative. And so ends the Nexus War. While members of the Kirantor would spend years reverse the damage done to Azeroth ley lines, the day was saved. Azeroth was saved. But this did mean that the Blue Dragonflight was now without their aspect and their leader. While some of them had understood the necessity of the Wormrest Accords, there were others who most certainly did not. And a bit of a split happened among their flights. A split that would become all the more clear when it was time to pick a new aspect to lead them. According to legend, when the original aspects were empowered, it was done so during a unique celestial event. The Embrace it's called, when the white moon, the mother, holds a blue child. An event that happens once in approximately 430 years. It was believed by the blues that this would be the best time to pick a new leader, if not a brand new aspect, at least one in title, and two major candidates were to pick from. On the one hand, there was Aragos, son of Malagos. He had been locked away for quite a while, as he was part of the dragons that sacrificed themselves during the War of the Shifting Sands. This war fought over in Silifus. It ended with a massive wall around Ankiraj to contain the threat of the old god Kafun. We brought the wall low during Classic, after collecting the Scepter of the Shifting Sands, and we set the dragons inside free. Now Ergos, he was a strong supporter of his father's plans, and holds a massive grudge towards Alex Raza and the world for murdering his father. Under my leadership, this flight will rise again. On the other hand, we have Caligos, and true to his nature as a blue dragon, Arcalic is madly drawn to the magic of the world. That's why he fell in love with Envina. Envina being the human form used to disguise the remaining powers of the High Elves their son well. It's a bit much to go into, and a story purely told within the comics. Long story short, Envina's true nature, it would be revealed, and while the now Blood Elves promise to keep her safe, their prince Kilfus became an ally of the Burning Legion, and Envina was taken by Kil'jaeden's forces in an attempt to open up a portal for him during the Burning Crusade. Heroes ventured into the Sunwell Plateau to stop this from happening. Inside, we saw the demise of Kalix's friend Madragosa, but we were able to liberate him out of the clutches of Safrovar the Corrupted, and together we stood against Kil'jaeden, breaking his hold over Envina and seeing the might of the Sunwell turned against him. The is broken. Goodbye, Kalik, my love. The loss of Envina hit him hard, and seeing how it was the red dragon Coriolstros that had created her to hide away the magic of the Sunwell. His next encounter with Electra's consort, it was not a happy reunion. Regardless, together, the red and the blue, they managed to stop Sinfaria within the novel Night of the Dragon. Her efforts of creating Twilight Dragons, efforts guided by Deathwing, they did ripple on into the Cataclysm. Being without the leader, it meant that they were weakened, and Kaelic feared that Deathwing was going to make use of that and try and take him out. True enough, as within Azara, we joined Kalik in helping out the rather eccentric blue dragon Azuragos, now hunted by the Black Dragonflight. You might recall facing off against Azuragos as he was the world boss during Classic. Adventurers, they took him on for glory and loot, something that he already expected, as his aspect, it had charged him with protecting one of the shards of the Scepter of the Shifting Sands. It's been nothing but a headache and pain ever since, not to mention the sinew that he possessed, which hunters use to make themselves an epic quiver. Getting tired of being hunted down, the blue decides to hang out within the spirit world, when he meets a rather cute spirit healer by the name of Anara. They're not fools though. They know that their love cannot last. We convince him to come help us out against the black dragon threats. 
Not out of any love for Kalik, though. Azura goes, doesn't think highly of him, and his little hero of the world bits. The idea of him becoming a new aspect is laughable. And that just goes to show that not even a Zuda ghost knows everything. You see, Archaelic, he has no real desire of taking up leadership of their flights. In fact, he was quite afraid of it. What would it mean if they did indeed choose him to lead, to become the next aspect? Would he still be the same Caligos? Would he change? Would everything be different? These fears he discussed with former war chief Vral within the novel Twilight of the Aspects. And Vral, he did not make fun of him for having these fears, nor did he think any less. In fact, to him, it only meant that Calic was very wise. May the Titans guide us. May we be inspired to choose with wisdom. What none of them knew, though, was that Eragos had actually allied himself to Deathwing. Voting for him to become the new Aspects, it would lead their entire flight into darkness. Something that the Bronze Dragon flight, they could somewhat foresee, they could sense that something was up. And so, they put heroes on the path to find out what was going on and put a stop to it. Easier said than done, though. Just walking up to the Nexus these days, it did not come without its risks. Not all the blues look kindly upon mortals, after all. Edegos nearly had Thrall himself eaten. Was it not for the blessing of the other aspects and Kalix standing up for him? We were no former war chief, nor a future world shaman. We were just mortals that quickly got caught by Terragosa. Luckily, she's one of the friendlier blues out there. Born under a special sign that foretold of her great destiny. If the prophecies are true, then her survival is of vital importance to the entire blue flight and to Azeroth itself. Protected and educated by Kalik ever since she was a hatchling, they forged a special bond over the millennia, not unlike what we would call siblings. Together, we venture through the Nexus, where slowly but surely she realizes that something isn't quite right. Now, to make sure that there was no competition for the title of Aspects, Twilight Forces are sent out to remove Caligos from the board. You shall not have him! Ah! And they would have succeeded, was it not for Terragosa making the ultimate sacrifice? Turns out that that prophecy was true. She was going to play a vital role to the flight, but not in life. Rather, her spirit would be bound to mortal heroes, who, while dealing with the conflicts amongst the blues, eventually managed to bind her forever to Dragon Roth Terragosa's rest. Her spirit would aid them through the turmoils of the Cataclysm, while the moment of choosing, it had finally come for the blues. This ritual, as it turned out, it was not an intellectual exercise, nor was it about the vote amongst the blues for who they thought would be the best candidates. It was not about the title of Aspect, give it to one who would use it as a tool only for himself and his flight. The celestial phenomenon, it was called the Embrace. This was about the heart of the Blue Dragon flight, not its brain. The new aspect could never be granted powers by thought alone. The titans had done what they felt was right, and so now, in this moment, had the blue dragon flights. They had listened, not just with their minds, but with their hearts. When Fro and Kalik had spoken, so it was that Caligos was chosen and empowered to be their new aspect of magic. Edegos, understandably, was pissed, of course, flying off in a huff. Promising that Nelfarian was going to take us all, but his allies had no love or loyalty to him. Instead, all they cared about was his blood. Blood that was spilled upon the focusing iris. This is a powerful, magical artifact, which they used to bring life to the massive five-headed chromatic dragon called Chromatus. A successful experiment from the black dragon Nefarian to unite the powers of the different flights into one. Our Chromatus fancied himself mating with Kiragosa. Another child of Malagos, sister to Eragos, who'd been taken captive by the Twilight's hammer. She would be able to liberate herself before any of that happened. Their plans were revealed and ultimately stopped. Chromatis was so powerful though that, despite having a brand new aspect on their side, they couldn't just destroy it. An arcane prison was their only option, which houses Chromatis even to this day. Another scheme of Deathwing and the Twilights had failed. Instead of controlling the blues from within, they now had Caligos as the new aspect to lead them through the War of the Cataclysm, to try and stop the Hour of Twilight, try to stop the mad aspect Deathwing. By using that focusing iris, they were able to pull their powers into that reclaimed dragon soul. With Fra at their side, they fought in unity, combined their powers to finally put a stop to Deathwing and by extension the old god Nazoth. And despite only recently becoming an aspect, Kalik already had to give up a huge portion of his powers and see the world through mortal eyes. A worthy sacrifice, of course, as the dawn of the Age of Mortals was now upon us. But it also came with great changes. 
many of the dragons, they started to wonder what their purpose was now. If they fulfilled their grand destiny, what more could they do? Some of the blues actually started to leave the Nexus in search of answers for themselves, and Kayla couldn't blame them. He himself wondered what he was going to do, and he asked Kiragosa, his beloved friend and sweet sister of the spirits, if she thought that the flight would choose him again, even now. Truth had ever been one of Kiragosa's most cherished ideals, and she looked at him, searching for an answer that was both true and comforting, and she could not find it. The question would linger as dire news reached them. As a precaution, they decided to move to focusing Iris and hide it away, just in case someone might want to take advantage of the weakened state. En route, the focusing Iris had been stolen, and looking for it brought Kaelic to Fedamore into the magical company of Miss Jaina Proudmore. Their time together blossomed into romance, but he wouldn't find the focusing Iris until it was already far too late. Turns out that it was stolen by the Horde, turned into a mana bomb, and dropped upon her city. The Age of Mortals, it was definitely kicked off with a bang. In retaliation, Jaina wanted to use the focusing Iris to flood all of Orkhamar, but Fro and Kaelic were able to change her mind. Instead, she used the powers gathered to defeat Garrosh, and then, considering that Fedamore was gone, she decided to join the Kirintor within Dalaran, even becoming their leader with her beloved Caligos at her side. For now, his place would be with her. Earlier, he had spoke with Kiragosa again, and she had told him that he was at a crossroads, as all of them were. Either the Blues were going to need him to lead them well and lead them wisely, or they were going to need to be set free to find their own paths, be the leaders of their own lives. After all, did they truly have a purpose higher than the duties to themselves, she asked, to which he asked her, where will you go? Those four words telling Kiragosa of his choice, setting her and the others free to find their own destiny. Hers would take her to see more of the world, to visit warmer climates than that of Northrend. Whereas his, that was to be in Dalaran, with the focusing Iris guarded in its vaults. The question of what now did not just play Calyx flight though. Even the other aspects were questioning their place in the world. Even considering breaking up and just have each go their own way. But Calyx wouldn't let that happen. After finding a strange magical artifact near the remains of Galagrond within Dragonblight, and seeing the world through the eyes of proto-dragon Malagos, seeing the dawn of the aspects, the battle against Galagrond, and the empowerment by Keeper Tear, he came back with knowledge and understanding, knowing that, while they might have a great deal less power, that they still had strength and purpose, even before becoming the aspects, and that the world, they could always use their guidance into this new age. This world is full of wonder. An age of conflict and strife, as the world united against War Chief Garrosh Hellscream, and then saw the biggest invasion of the Burning Legion as of yet. The relationship between Kaelic and Jaina, it, it's been quite rocky. Their different opinions when it comes to the Horde and the safety of the world, it's made it all but impossible for them to stay together. She would even leave Dalaran and the Kirintor, unable to stand with them as they agreed with Ketgar and voted to let the Horde back in. Our Blue Dragon Aspect stayed with them, even became a member of the Council of Six, the rulers of the city. And the war against the Legion, it had them help out the mages with the Order Hall, their quest of finding powerful artifacts to take the battle to the Legion. Some of them would even venture back into the Nexus, save Azuragos again, this time from the Ethereum. His opinion on Kaelic, it seems to have changed a bit, and he asked heroes to give him his regards. While Azuragos, he will stay behind to secure the Nexus, to make sure that it would never again fall into the wrong hands. I thank you for freeing me. You have given me the greatest gift of all. That of time. With those powerful artifacts in hand, our adventures of Legion had us scour the Broken Isles, make new friends, make new allies while fighting against the demons. Allies like the blue dragon Stella Gosa, who could use her aid as she's been captured. After saving her, she also asked for a bit more help with her grandfather Senegos, leader of the Azure Wing. There's old. And then there's Senegos. Senegos could very well be one of the oldest blue dragons around, but he's not exactly doing great. Still enough strength left within him to help us out. In return, we help him and his kin, strengthening him enough to keep on going and ultimately fighting off the withers that tried to devour him. The dragon flights will rise again. Burning the friendship of Emagosa, adding the great, 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 great granddaughter of Senegos to our battle pet collection. Then, during the Nightborn Rebellion, as we worked together with Arcanist Valtois, 
to redirect the ley lines in Azuna, Stelagosa shows up again, wondering why we're messing with the magics of the land. At first, the Nyborn and the dragon, they don't really get along with each other. But soon enough, they recognize each other's skills and competence. Respect is earned on both sides. And while Valtois usually only thinks highly of herself, Stelagosa's knowledge and skills, it has her wanting to know more and more about her. You go on ahead and inform Thalysra. I have a few questions for our friend here. Yes? What do you want to know? Do you actually visualize the lines? Or is it more that you sense them? Is it a constant sensation? Or can you turn it on and off? Which had some wonder if there was perhaps more going on between them. Perhaps another magical relationship. But sadly, nothing further has come of this. Which leaves me with the final thing that I want to mention, as I think we've been going on for long enough. There was Caligos and the Blue Dragonflight that would of course join us in a war against the old god Nazoth during Battle for Azeroth. This is the old god that they credited for signing Deathwing's paychecks as they described it back then. He was the one fully empowering the mad aspect during the Cataclysm. And with Battle for Azeroth, the old god actually released from its prison. Fighting back was going to take a whole lot, like empowering our heart with the power of the different flights. We join Kalik into the familiar redoubt to find out why Queen Alexstrasza had not answered her call for aid. Turns out that she was under attack by Vexiona and her brood, a void-infused twilight dragon. We manage to force her to retreat, earn the full support of the different flights, and cleanse the world of Azeroth from its old god's infection. And that's pretty much the major story behind the Blue Dragon Flights. A flight that has suffered immensely at the hands of Deathwing, with a leader that's gone mad. Others amongst their flights that try to pick up the pieces and carry on their mission. With a new leader chosen, they fulfilled their destiny and found themselves wanting for a purpose. A fractured family that even to this day, it's still trying to find its place within the world. And time is going to tell what magical adventures the Dragon Flight is going to give them. But for now, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Say that you want to read up on all the things that we talked about today, or just in need of more information, then check out the Related Wild article in the description down below. As for me, subscribe and ring that bell to be notified for future uploads. Hit that like button if you enjoyed yourself. And um, yeah, that's going to be it for me for today. Until next time. See ya!